and singing was a central part of this demonstration. The singing revolution lasted for four years, accompanied by various acts of protest and violence. In 1991, as Soviet tanks attempted to stop the progress towards independence, the Supreme Court of Estonia and the Estonian Congress proclaimed the restoration of the independence of Estonia. People acted as human shields to protect radio and TV stations from Soviet tanks. Through these actions, Estonia regained its independence without any bloodshed, all while using song as a unifying force. We hope you enjoy this incredibly beautiful work by contemporary Estonian composer Kurt Usberg. The poem speaks of evening and of the images we associate with dusk. The poem is by the 19th century Estonian writer Erst Emm, whose works often include elements of home, the road, and the Uncertainty, 
and unrest, the silenced voices began to sing again. Slowly, surely, a sound muffled by masks and distance began to seep back into the vernacular. That sound was singing. If the last year has taught us anything, it is that in spite of fear and darkness, always, always, something sings. Let me go where'er I will. I hear a sky-born music still. It sounds from all things old. It sounds from all things young. From all that's fair, from all that's foul. Alway, alway, something sings. It is not only in the rose. It is not only in the bird. Not only where the rainbow glows, nor in the song of woman heard. But in the darkest, meanest things. There, alway, alway, something sings. Tis not in the high stars alone, nor in the cup of bunny flowers, nor in the robin's mellow tone, nor in the bow that smiles and showers, but in the meanest, darkest things, there are always, always something sings.
this is your first time ever hearing the Shippensburg Concert Choirs, um, you don't have any basis for comparison. So maybe, you know, staying with masks on seems like something we would always do, right? Uh, but there have been a number of changes, most notably that we have to sing with masks on. And we have these special masks called singer's masks that give us a little bit more space to breathe so that every time we inhale, the mask is not going into our mouths. Uh, but it does muffle the sound, of course. And we are in a different space. This is a beautiful performing hall, and it's wonderful to be in here, but it is made for large productions and not really conducive to chamber singing, so that was also a bit of an adjustment for us. We're normally downtown at a church, so this has been a little different. And last but not least, the amount of time to put it together. We uh, did not come back to campus until February 23rd, so we had seven weeks. And of those seven weeks, only six full rehearsals where we had sopranos, actors, tenors, and basses. Of those, we had exactly zero with everyone there at one time. <laughs> so this is actually the first time we've all sung together tonight. Uh, so history right here. First time that this whole group has been on stage together. But they showed up ready to work. And I think all of us with just such a renewed sense of joy and purpose in being able to sing. The year and a half we couldn't sing together, I think really brought some of us to a very, very difficult place. And so when we could first come in and sing and to hear them at SATV is, is such an incredible, almost spiritual experience. And so we're so thankful you're here for that tonight. Speaking of spiritual, uh, Mozart, our next composer, wasn't particularly spiritual, but if it paid the bills, he was happy to write a sacred piece. Uh, but Mozart, of course, one of the most prolific composers of all time in the classical era, uh, is our composer behind the next piece, Dixit Dominus, which is quite a work. It is a just grip it and rip it kind of piece, but a glorious work. Uh, but it sets Psalm 110. You can see the translation in your program and follow along with it. Um, but it isn't exactly sunshine and roses, and while it is really this passage about judgment, it's a passage about judgment saying, people have done unjust things to me. I have been the victim of, of unjust accusations and, and people who have hurled insults against me. And now a force mightier than I is going to stand in front of me and is going to lay to waste all of those who oppose me. So even though it's a dark passage, it is about justice, and it is about justice for those who have not been able to stand up for themselves, and it is about the Lord standing in, but in this case, uh, a, higher, a higher element, a higher power that stands in the stead and is able to bring justice to those who were opposed.
officer got a comment from Mr. Levine in the back row saying, I'm going to call you out right here from your life, <laughs> saying that this is the meanest program to ever give to a pianist. But Mrs. Miss, she knows how to move the tempo when we need it and when to pull back. There's a lot of intuitive playing that comes when you're playing for singers, and we're so thankful to have her. Um, and so I said, well, I know she can handle it, plus, you know, we haven't been able to sing together for a year and a half, so I'm just going to throw everything at her. And she gets to play on this beautiful Steinway. Um, so after the Mozart, we're now going to go to some pieces in English. You probably thought that we really didn't know how to sing in English because I tend to program a lot of foreign languages. But the next piece is Sure on the Shining Night, and then the rows are both in English, one an American composer and one is a Norwegian composer.
a minute or two to recognize our seniors. Sadly, at the end of 2019, we have several, um, several choir members who've been in it since freshman year, who graduated last December, and uh, we weren't able to say goodbye to them, or really we were planning on doing something in the spring, or people who graduated in May 2020. We have quite a few seniors, actually, and we never got to see them or wish them off. So we want to make sure we take a minute to recognize our seniors. So I'm going to call their names. They're in bold print uh, in your program. And as I call them, I'm going to ask them to come up here, and they're just going to say their name, their hometown, their major, and something about why they love being in choir. A little propaganda right there. So, Lacey Carey, Carrick Ellis, Megan Fields, Ryan Hippensteel, Tobias Hodges, David Russell, Laura Russell, and Jasmine Williams. And I'm going to ask Lacey, here she is, she's only been in choir for, you know, a couple of weeks, and I'm going to have her start this. So Lacey, come on up. Hi, my name is Lacey. I'm a psychology major. This is my first semester in choir. I've only been here for a couple of weeks. But my favorite thing is definitely the um, positive atmosphere that it has. Hello, Hi, I'm Kara Dellis. Um, I am from Chambersburg, so just south of here. Um, I'm an English writing major with a minor in music. Um, and this is my first time being in choir in a little over a decade. Uh, I haven't been in it since middle school. And uh, just the camaraderie that comes with this, uh, I was in it last spring, so it was, it was pretty fun to get to know everybody. I love messing with my, my bass section, and uh, me and Brian just Kind of bouncing, <laughs> bouncing off each other, just cracking jokes and having a good time in and amongst uh, making music together. So I'm Megan Fields and I'm from Lebanon, Pennsylvania and I'm a dual major in early childhood and special education. And my favorite part of choir has been um, just getting to sing with everyone for four years and being able to express my love of singing while here. Hello, my name is Ryan Hippensteel. I'm a senior here at Shippensburg University with a major in software engineering. I have no idea what semester this is at choir. I have no idea. Um, seven, maybe seven. Um, but one of my favorite memories from choir is definitely the Ireland trip we did where we toured all of Ireland with our choir. It was a, such a great time. A lot of memories, a lot of good relationships built from that, and I will keep that for a long time. Uh, I'm Tobias Hodges. Um, I'm from Yarmouth, Pennsylvania, which is on the other side of Philadelphia. I am the first secondary mathematics and special education dual cert person from Shippensburg, which is pretty cool. Um, and I've been in choir every year since the fifth grade. <laughs> and I'm kind of terrified of graduating and not having it in my life anymore. Um, because it's, it's really part of how I just express myself. And so, I don't know, I'm not part of it, we'll see. <laughs> Hello, I'm David. I'm a uh, human communications senior here, and I'm from Doylestown, Pennsylvania area. Uh, my favorite memory is probably tied between the duck bills that we got to wear and uh, being able to sing in a group for the first time in a long time. And, you know, it's my first and last semester I'll get to be in choir here, so. It was all around a good experience. Hi, I'm Laura Russell. I'm from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour from Hershey. I'm majoring in Management Information Services. And I guess my favorite thing is getting to say goodbye like this, because for our seniors from last semester and the semester before, they didn't get to say goodbye in the way that they spent four years planning to do. So I'm just really thankful that we get to do it this way, this semester. Hi, I'm Jasmine Williams. Uh, I'm a social work major with a minor in disability studies. I've been in choir a little bit too long. 
Um, this is one of my first concerts with these guys, though, and I have to say they're pretty decent. Um, I think my favorite part of choir has definitely been finding people close to as weird as I am uh, who support my love of crops. <laughs> Most definitely. Let's give the seniors a warm round of applause. Thank you for everything. Thank you for advocating for us and letting us, helping us sing this semester and for preparing us for tonight's concert and making choir so fun. So that's just a little thank you from all of us. Thank you. 
I should have knocked Mrs. Niss after that one because there's a lot going on. <laughs> Mrs. Niss, thank you. She's
Um, all of our wind players, our brass players have had to find accommodations for this. But as singers, I mean, the expression here suddenly muted with a mask on as you have found walking into stores or trying to greet people that you have to find very expressive eyebrows or something to be able to transmit that joy. Um, I hope you can feel it coming from the stage to the audience. They're a wonderfully expressive group, and I'm so sad that you can't see their lovely expressions. But then all those people that I've been after for years, like, you need to really look expressive. Now they can relax under this and not have to get this speech. So our next piece and our last piece for concert choir, How Can I Keep From Singing, is a Quaker hymn that has been said many, many, many times as well. Of course, it's about singing. Um, and being a Quaker state, um, we can relate to this or feel a connection to this maybe a little bit more strongly. But this was written by Quakers who were persecuted by their faith, and they were the subject of many injustices, wrongly imprisoned, their land seized, um, publicly flogged and um, humiliated for their beliefs at times. And this is uh, talks about being in prison, in, in dungeon cell and prison vile, even when tyrants our child and we will still sing. So it talks about whether we are facing adversity or whether we are walking through the golden, beautiful times of our lives, there is always reason to sing. How can I keep from singing?
we chose to end with this, or I should say I chose to end with this, <laughs> because we didn't have, you know, our fall concert season, and we didn't have the December Madrigals Christmas dinners, which is always a highlight of the entire year. It brings together students, faculty, staff, alumni, community members, and it just really kicks off the season. And I had so many people say, oh, I just didn't feel like Christmas without the Madrigal Singers dinners. Um, and this is how we end it. And if you look in your program, this was something that was instated by Dr. Blaine Schover, Professor Emeritus. Uh, he retired in May 2020. What a year to choose to walk out of the university. I'll tell you, we always joke that when he retired, the, the walls would just crumble and fall apart. And that's pretty much what happened without him. So, <laughs> Dr. Schover's name uh, is recognized throughout the world, and I kid you not, I have been on trips to Ireland, Austria, Germany, and people say, oh, Schoenberg, you must know Blaine Schober. Well, yes, I do. I think we all do. And it's been wonderful to carry on this tradition of magical day of dinners, singing the benediction at the end. But it seemed fitting, since we have some seniors here who did not get their last memorable dinner, we wanted to end with the benediction tonight. And we want to dedicate it to our dear friend, Dr. Blaine Schober. So this is for you, Blaine.